and I'll be playing Yngril Starcrusher, uh, a giant courtier. Okay. And the we are being jammed by Austin. Hello, everyone. I'm Austin. You can find myself and you don't meet in an inn at not an inn on Twitter. And I'm Christine. I'm playing Dorfy, the uh, unborn sorceress. And you can sometimes find me at not an inn. And most of the time, I'm off somewhere else in the internet. That's not your business. <laughs> <laughs> the dark web. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, last we left our heroes. Who wants to describe what happened last session to free up your memories and remind everyone what went on? Not it. <laughs> <laughs> so brave. <laughs> Uh, I volunteer as tribute. Oh, all my friends died. That's what happened last session. We had a post-opera dinner. It was the worst, like, rap party ever. Well. <laughs> and, <laughs> so uh, we had a lot of the important delegates from out and about in the last city, including, like, the captain guard, um... The land, or the leader, or one of the leaders of the landlords, who was uh, uh, Drake, uh, and there were some university people, and there were, there was my mentor and best friend. Uh, what was their name? <laughs> <laughs> was it, er, it was Ertal, right? Is, or, Istal Boulder Ripper. Istal, Istal Boulder Ripper. <laughs> My dearest and dearest friend. <laughs> um, and so we also had like a giant suspicious box that nobody decided to open until after dinner. And it turned out that it held one of the uh, the sparks. And they, um, we had a terrible battle. And people died and got turned into lightning zombies. And yeah, good times were not had. Yep, the uh, it, so the two people who got turned into the sparked, well, three. The first was Polum, who was supposed to uh, play the role that Viper filled during the opera, but was nowhere to be found come opening night. And then there was uh, Commander Jesse Lutenia, who was, as you said, the leader of the Coast Guard. And of course, poor Istal Boulder Ripper, the leader of the Giants delegation and host of this party. Uh, the other three, the other four people who were at the dinner, were Lord Omba Broadwing, who is one of the landlords and a Drake. There was also Elder Sibling Dynastisil, who is one of the who is an elf and one of the uh, Dirt Folk Guild. Who's the Dirt Folk Guild being like a workers union that started in the coal mines. Um, then there was also Dean Gruss Sasai, an, an Iguanian, um, and she was the dean of uh, the university on, in the city, and the, the university being the original purpose for the city's founding. And also accompanying her was Professor Rory Aowim, who is a Katum is a cat person and she is a big fan of the opera <laughs> yeah uh so yes dynastisil aom and sasai managed to escape they just booked it right out the front door once the spark showed up and they managed to regain their composures and now it is the four of you five counting dorothy's familiar and three bodies of the sparked congratulations ingril you've inherited a townhouse Woo! <laughs> um <laughs> so, oh dear so what do you all do um, we should burn the bodies we should call the guard and I point <laughs> uh, 
That's what I mean. Um. The guard. The, these these folks will want to take care of their own. Is what I'm saying. I would recommend that any flesh-based organism in the room should probably vacate, as I am worried about how contagious these bodies are. Uh, I wouldn't mind examining the fallen to see if we could learn anything about this disease, as there's never really been a an opportunity to do this before, and I feel like it would be very beneficial for the people outside of the quarantine to find some information, maybe we can find a cure, or maybe we can figure out how this disease spreads. Be handy for the people in the quarantine as well, apparently. Um, I'm going to check the vitals of, um... Boulder thrower? Th Boulder, sorry. Ripper. Boulder Ripper. Ripper. <laughs> um, because she had our pay for the performance, and I just don't want that getting set aside in all the hullabaloo. Because magical research is hard and expensive. <laughs> Looting my friend's corpse before they're even cold. I don't say that in character. <laughs> no. oh, that's, I'm, I'm going to roll presentation to hide the fact that I am trying to get our payment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I will take us over to the play screen then, since dice are starting to get rolled. Sure. I think there's a moment where I'll, like, I'll send for the guard, and I call out to pull him, and then there's just like a moment, and like my face falls, and I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> 18. Uh, does anyone want to roll notice to try and uh, spot Dorothy uh, swiping Istal's purse? Just our pay, not her entire pockets. <laughs> um. I don't think I'm in the right frame of mind for that right now, so. I can I can try. So this would be notice. <laughs> no. <laughs> Viper, you gonna give it a shot or are you good? I don't think Viper is paying particular attention to that at the moment. Fair. Okay, so Dorothy, you do find a uh, I, I believe it's an on. There's probably like four envelopes in it. Or you mean five? No, there's four envelopes. I will explain. Okay. So they have <laughs> they have uh, Dorothy's name, Ingrill's name, V's name, and then one says Pullum with, and then Pullum scratched out and has Viper <laughs> written. <laughs> um. Yeah. But Viper is still part of the production. Wasn't supposed to be, though. Well, you're part of the production, but you weren't supposed to be well, part of the true, performance. True. Yeah, 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 true. Good point. You, you, this is your pay for opening night. You would, you would have received pay previously for your uh, combat training that you gave Polo. Okay. All right. So yeah, you find those four envelopes. They clearly have uh, silver in them. And so uh, let me know when you open them and I'll tell you how much is inside. Okay. Well, not here in the room right now. <laughs> you're, you're leaving the expansive dining room to go elsewhere? No, not yet. Oh, okay. I'm just figuring out how to store these giant envelopes on my body. <laughs> <laughs> just... Each one of them's like a sleeping bag for you. I mean, they're not that big, but... <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so Viper, you said you weren't paying that much attention to what Dorothy was doing, so what are you up to? Um, I am paying attention to my wounds and those of Madame V, because it looks like she got it even worse than me <laughs> during that fight. <laughs> okay. 
<clears throat> so while Ingrel is sending for the guard, uh, I will approach uh, Madame V and, and uh, like that was an impressive display. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, it looks like you may have actually gotten the worst of it here. So if you don't mind and I will, uh, with your permission, take her hand and lead her to the washroom so that I can uh, use my doctor kit to uh, clean your wounds. Yeah, I, I, yes, please. I would appreciate that. And um, <coughs> I think when you take her hand, you feel her trembling still from, from fighting. Um. Okay, good. I'll take the brazier also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's fine. laughs> uh, and I guess it's time to roll uh, my medicine skill. Okay. So a note about the brazier is that um, the dean was like feeding it bits of charcoal over the course of. So so now that now that uh, she's ditched it, it is dying down. So if you want to okay. keep it hot, you're gonna have to feed it more charcoal. I wasn't concerned about keeping it hot. Just. Uh taking it off her hands uh, and we'll set it aside at the first opportunity okay so <laughs> this will be a uh, mend check using medicine okay and additional modifiers so there's the one. nice 19 okay you don't have anything that increases your threat range with medicine. Oh, no, that was a 16 roll. Right, okay. So, yes. succeed. so you succeed. Uh, so you heal 2d6 vitality. Oh, sorry. 2d6 <laughs> split evenly between subdual vitality and wounds. Okay. How, sorry, how many rolls? 2d6. 2d6, thank you. Seven, hooray. All right. So, and any any excess, you get to just decide where it goes. Okay, well, it gets me up to 8 out of 14 vitality. Because I didn't have any wounds and I didn't have any subdual. Okay, so what does it look like, uh, the treatment of the wounds of a root walker? That's a good question. Um, I guess in this case it was a lot of um, electric stuff so a lot of burn marks um and the way that that looks is um sort of um sc scraping off the uh, like literal charcoal um and um putting like a salve and wrapping that um to keep the exposed stuff clean same way that you would um a person except a little bit uh less delicate instead of raw pink flesh it's the raw green like soft wood under no, the bark that, that wood yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep. okay ingril what are you up to i think um <clears throat> the most sensible thing because nobody else is in here right is nobody else is what? Sorry? Is in the building, right? No, no. Okay, then I'm going to have to step outside and shout for the guards as I go down uh, the stairs, right? Okay. Uh, so you step outside, and a crossbow bolt thunks into the door next to you. Oh, yo! <laughs> I will take cover in the doorway. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so you look like through the peephole in the door, and you can see that there's already a handful, like just like three very nervous guards standing out front uh, with crossbows. Okay. Okay. I am going to uh, run over to the table and grab one of the dinner napkins, <laughs> and I'm going to wave it out the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think another one like pins it to the door. 
my god. <laughs> and, and then you hear someone called, Stop shooting! Don't you recognize what that was? And then you hear some, like, shouting back and forth about, like, But what if they're sparked? We're all fine in here. I shout through the crack of the door. Uh, sh show yourself! <laughs> Are you going to shoot me if I do? <laughs> There's definitely, like, a pause, and you can hear, like, <laughs> some very quiet conversation <laughs> amongst the handful of guards out front. And, uh... and then you see, um... Let's see. Uh, you notice that the Dean is behind them, and the Dean, like smacks one of them in the back of the head <laughs> and, and then one of the guards calls out no we won't fire unless you show signs of being sparked <laughs> <laughs> out I step veins of lightning through my skin <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, De definitely one of them like points a crossbow at you anyways but like doesn't fire but and and he is nervous looking so there's there's these three guards along with the dean uh two of them are human and one of them is an iguanian and uh, so it's the the iguanian that the dean smacked in the back of the head i'm ingle starcrusher i'm with the giant delegation there's been the spark of kill a few of our number they're they're dead the spark car I just um we need to do something with their bodies hmm I think the three of them like look at each other this is clearly above their pay grade <laughs> And then one of them says, You need to stay in there, quarantined, until the vice commander arrives. Is the vice commander the person who's laying dead in the, uh... No, that was the commander. Oh, okay. okay, the commander. Yes. We have sent for vice commander Hastings, and he should be here... Within within the hour. Very well. We will wait on Vice Commander Hastings. Please direct him to seek me out when he gets here. Very well. You can see as you... You can see that there are a couple more guards starting to arrive. And... Uh, Dorothy, I think through like one of the windows you spot some guards going around back behind the townhouse I don't know if I do considering the windows are probably <laughs> unless they're floor to ceiling windows <laughs> okay fair I guess uh, Ingril <laughs> you are the one who sees them through the peephole but... okay um Oh man, we probably have like some windows that people can see out of. Like, um, but yeah, who cares for me? <laughs> that's that's fair. We are very a very this large and accessible folk. Um, <laughs> uh, so I see them like sneaking around back. Yeah, there's definitely some of them that are going around back. Um, Viper, bar the back door. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> trot, 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 trot. It'll take me 30 minutes to get there, but sure. Oh, you're... <laughs> Wait. Aren't you giant size as well? Uh, yeah, I am. I, I was being facetious. Oh, oh okay. I guess so. so. I'm giant size and faster than everyone else here. So. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Yeah, so Viper, looking through the back door, you can spot that there's, again, a small group of guards around the back with crossbows pointed at the doorway. They aren't, like, they aren't looking like they're going to try and uh, breach and clear the place. Right. They're just nervous. So. Uh, you know, that's fair. 
We're apparently under quarantine until Vice Commander Hastings arrived. It should be about an hour. If anyone has any better ideas, I think we're unfortunately stuck waiting. Is there a second floor? There yeah. is a second floor. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ingril, I would suggest that perhaps you and, and Foxglove should head up to the upper floors. I don't, again, I just, I don't know how contagious uh, the spark is, and I do worry for the two of you. You're right. Um, I'll be in my study. Or, I I don't think I say I'll, I'll be in um, Mistral's study. Okay. All right. So y'all are stuck here for the next hour or so. What does everyone want to do during this downtime? Uh, probably we'll take some time to uh, try to tend to my own wounds as well. All right. Wow. Just on the uh, dining room table. <laughs> there and there's a roll Ooh, only rolled a four plus three which is a seven which is not gonna gonna do it no unfortunately you need a 15 to do a mend check i do uh i do have cosmetic bandages on now though (laughs) (laughs) yes and so you can only be targeted by one mend check per day oh yeah so that's that's what Viper's up to. V, what are you doing? Um, well, I am taking some time to try and try and shake the nerves, um, and I I think and like try and compose myself and um, I think I I do compose myself to some extent, but I still feel really jittery and really like the, the adrenaline is still there, um. But I don't know if if you're asking for like a mechanical impetus. I don't actually have a thing to do here. Um, no, no. If you don't have something mechanical that you want to get up to, that's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't. Um, un- unless I, I I might go and um, see if Dorothy needs help examining the bodies. Um, see if I can't be of some help somewhere. All right. So, Dorothy, what are you doing? Uh, I think it's time to crack open a cold one. (laughs) Um, (laughs) She does not say that out loud. People don't like her sense of humor, apparently. Um, I am (laughs) going... I'm going to go to the one that the people care less about, the actor, and then, I guess, examine him first. All right, so you're doing an autopsy in the living room. Well, I'm not... I'm seeing what information I can gain without making any new wounds on the body. I would like to do a a more in-depth autopsy later, but... Right, uh, yeah, I I don't feel like... (laughs) Technically, it's a necropsy. (laughs) Okay. So... Uh, I think that's probably an investigate roll. Okay. Is there something I can do to assist? Yes. So, assisting in fantasy craft. Uh, oh, nuts. I looked this up before because I knew I would have to know how it works, and it has fled my mind. I'm pretty sure you have to also make the same skill check, and then if you succeed, the person leading gets a bonus okay um what are you rolling uh christine i am rolling investigate correct correct cool it's a 13 13 hmm 
Is is that enough? Hmm. Uh no, I think he probably needed a fifteen. Okay. For that. And I rolled uh twenty-two. Twenty-two. Oh. Okay. I mean the most amount of help I probably need is actually moving the limbs and such. So <laughs> you are actually being very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. So, on a 22, you can tell that once they are uh, destroyed, we shall say, they no longer have electricity running through them. Presumably that means they're no longer contagious, but without, this is not a mundane disease. It is clearly magical <laughs> in nature. It has some mundane components. You can tell with Polum that there, there is some growths on his skin which appear to act as batteries in a sense so there is a, a small small piece that is at least uh, chemical based um what else do you learn hmm They don't appear to have any sort of blood flow in them. It's purely that they are held upright by the electricity surging through them. Oh. Polum's blood is congealed in his veins. He is long dead. Whatever semblance of consciousness was in his body is a, a trick of the lightning in his brain, kicking up faint oh. thoughts and memories. Okay, so it's like, it's like when you apply electricity to like a part of the brain, you'll sometimes get like a muscle action. Yeah. What else is there that you can learn? Um, can I tell how long he's been dead? Yes. That will help us. Yes. Uh, he's been dead about three days. Oh, God. We don't keep good track of our actors. He, he is a known um, hedonist. And so him <laughs> disappearing for a couple of days is not terribly surprising. So. When was the last time we saw him? Um, probably four days ago. Okay, that could be helpful to investigate. Any other questions? What was his original um, uh, cause of death? Can I determine that? Yeah. So his cause of death. Um, let's see. Yeah, he actually has some uh, electricity burns on him, not unlike the ones sustained by Ingril, though to a much more severe degree. I would think that that indicates that he, he he died by sparked. He was not like killed and then exposed. Okay. Hmm. I think 
think that's it. Unless anyone else has any suggestions. Okay. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> All right. So you spend your hour examining Polum's body. And towards the end of that, there is a knock at the front door. Is this a new scene now? Uh, yes, this will be a new scene. Oh, could I have been doing something while we were Oh, yes, away? absolutely. Um, so what was the name of the person who sent the crate? Salazar. Salazar. Is there anything in the study that might clue me into who that is? Absolutely. Uh, this will be an investigate roll. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Make sure pushing the right button. 17. 17. All right. Um, okay. So, let's see. Where is my notes on Salazar? Uh, right, okay. So, Salazar is an Iguanian and a well-known patron of the arts. Um, I think th this is, this, that bit is common knowledge. Uh, it's not from the investigation. What you discover is that Salazar did not patronize your production. He had no involvement in it. In fact, I think you find, um, you find a letter, like some correspondence, at least his side, between himself and Istal. And what you get from the, cor the, the couple of letters that are still in Istal's desk is that Istal, knowing that he is a patron, approached him for funding and... He declined at first uh, using the excuse of he was financing other groups and couldn't afford it. But you can tell over like a couple of months leading up to the production, it still remained in conversation with him. And eventually it comes out that... Uh, Salazar just couldn't for afford it. He is in debt. Oh. Um, is there anything else you would get about Salazar? Okay. Um, no, I think that's it. I, I don't think that Istal's desk would have anything else. I mean, he seems cordial enough in the correspondence. They don't seem to be like their close friends or anything, but they seem to have a positive, prospective working relationship. <laughs> so. Is there anything else? Good, good. Okay, so there is the knock on the front door. Oh, and we lost Cassandra. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, I guess she is continuing to have some internet issues. Um, so until she gets back, what are the rest of y'all doing about this knock at the front door? Um, they will, will um, uh, 
dust off her her skirts and go over and um take a peek. All right, you look through the peephole, and there is a very nervous looking uh, coast guard. Um, to be clear, the coast guard are the only law enforcement on the island. They handle the blockades. They handle the city watch. They patrol the shores. They 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 do every bit of law enforcement. There's a very nervous coast guard in the simple like pot helmet and leather armor that they typically wear. Uh, he's got a strap across his chest, which has his crossbow, and he's got a, a short sword in hand. Actually, hmm. Yeah, I think it'll be a short sword. He's got a short sword in hand. And he's, like, looking at the door and then, like, looking back at what you can now see is basically, like, a ring of Coast Guard around the building. There is a pike line surrounding the building along with crossbowmen. They are not take. You can also see there is a Gatorian, which is one of the uh, lizard folk who, instead of being like an iguana style, is basically an alligator. So like this big beefy Gatorian who appears to be in charge here and is wearing like full metal armor and a helmet and is directing people around appears to be the one directing the ballista that is aimed at the door oh great wonderful um i'm gonna i'm gonna open the door um we don't ha need to have a siege today it is uh all the <laughs> excitement is over i am so sorry to say um but please please do come in and make yourself useful <laughs> so you invite this very <laughs> nervous guard inside yeah okay he he comes in and he has a look around in from the front foyer and sees the two bodies on the ground sees all the burn spots on the floor and a couple and like the bandages on you Dorothy looking over Polum's body just taking it all in very nervously mm -hmm. but um hmm I think I think you're gonna have to convince him that like everything is cool in here he's definitely keeping a bit of a distance from you like clearly wondering whether or not you are infected and could turn at any time since you obviously have bandages on you <laughs> um could i use charming in this situation sure what do you do um i say um excuse me sir if you're not a root walker or uh if you if you and your group are have any flesh-based organisms uh, with you, I would recommend that you vacate the area. Myself and my companions here are immune to the disease. However, we want to prevent the spread of this. He so no, so I just know you him, but politely. <laughs> <laughs> and I raise his uh, disposition by one. Yeah. So he he looks uh, shocked once he notices you. Um, and then it, hmm, how, so we've established that there are other unborn, other vessels in this yes. world. How m common knowledge are they, do you think? Okay. I, my, my headcanon has been that unborn are very rare. Um, however, because of the, um, because of the quarantines and, uh, the, all the, immigration to to the quarantine um, there has been uh, the, the general knowledge of them has been increasing because I think that 
root walkers and unborn and other similar organisms have been able to survive the plague much better than flesh-based organisms. Therefore, um, uh, therefore, while unborn are still very rare, um, people have seen them in person as opposed to just reading about them. Okay. Yeah, so he... He sees you, and he seems surprised by your presence at first. Uh, and then he... It hits him what you are. And so, uh, let's see. I think he he takes your advice to heart, <laughs> and takes a couple of steps back from. Takes a couple of steps back from the bodies, even though he's already like a fair distance away from them. <laughs> <laughs> and he says uh, is there anything you want me to relay to uh, Vice Commander Hastings um, um, simply that uh, the danger has passed and um, that it is not necessarily safe for uh, organic materials, as as, as my, my uh, good friend Dorothy has, has just said, and um, that it would be uh, prudent to um, call in Salazar for questioning, as that is the uh, um, the one who signed his there his um, yeah. signed his name on the box that brought uh, a, a, a spark to our dinner. Uh, uh, okay. And so he wanders back out. Like, he backs away. He, he understands what you said. He still doesn't quite trust uh, V for her potential infectedness. <laughs> um, so he leaves, and he goes, and he speaks to the vice commander. Closes the door, Viper's standing next to the stairwell with her arms crossed and is like, uh, do you think they already know the commander's dead? Oh. I would assume that if they have yet, if, if they didn't call out to the commander, that they would assume that he's dead. Well, That's probably fine. He says lying to everyone in the room. If his dinner was on their itinerary or not. But... Well, let's write a note on a rock and throw it out. <laughs> it's not a hostage situation. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not. Let's just talk about it. Like people who aren't actually in trouble. Well, we can do it your way, sure. <laughs> Speaking of, there is a bang at the door. A banging at the door. And V, are you going to open the door again? I, I will open the door again, yes. Okay. So on the other side of the door is Vice Commander Hastings. And as I described, uh, he is a big gator guy. He is not nearly as tall as you are, but he is probably as broad. Mm. Um, well, okay, not literally as broad, since uh, <laughs> according We're all to a bunch of big broads, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna go with the fact that uh, <laughs> according to the mechanics, y'all are about ten feet wide. He he is not that big, but he, he is a very big fellow. Um, He's probably not used to having to literally look up to anyone. <laughs> uh, so you can see that hint of discomfort in his eyes. But he keeps a straight face and he says, Are you the one in charge here? 
Uh, mm, for the moment, yes. Um, uh, Ingril is still upstairs, but being organic based. Uh, it, Where's the not, commander? Uh, you should come in and see. Um, and I open the door for, for him and show where uh, where Jesse Lutiera is. Lutenia is. Okay. So he he comes in and he has a look at the scene before him. And he says, Now I heard that it might be dangerous for me to approach. Are you certain of that? Uh, I, I look to Dorothy. Um, well, some preliminary, <laughs> why can't I say that word? Preliminary, uh, uh, examination of the body suggests that the virus might be dormant right now. However, it is your life, so <laughs> it's up to you, I guess. Hmm. That's a polite way of saying it's not your fault if I get infected. That's, uh... That's about as reassuring as she ever gets. So. I understand. All right. Well, this is part of the job. So he, he comes over. And that same nervous guard from before is with him. Oh, boy. Poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is definitely like... The new guy who drew the short stick did for for coming and knocking on the door. And so the vice commander looks at the bodies and looks at the commander. Doesn't pointedly does not touch the commander or any of their gear. <coughs> and then looks at the three of you and says so, seems things got pretty bad in here. Yes. What happened? Well, um, we were gathered around for drinks after, after dinner and decided to crack open this big box that was sent to us um, by Salazar as a, a gift. Um, to we've... be fair, it has his name on it. We don't know necessarily it was sent by him. It was signed. Uh, you have a, a point, I suppose. Um, I think Ingrid has the, has the letter. Um, oh, sorry, to be clear, it, it did have his signet in wax on the envelope, so. Um, continue. Um, and uh, out, out steps the uh, m missing um, member of our crew all electrified and starts swinging and um, as, as you can see our our dear friends um, is still Boulder River and your your good commander um, took the worst of it uh, but but def defended very valiantly the rest of the rest of the uh, the dinner party who, who managed to escape in, in, in time um, to be unscathed yes uh, my Guards tell me that it was the dean who fetched them initially, and then they, of course, sought assistance, as is protocol. Hmm. All right. Well, I suppose that puts me in charge of the Coast Guard. <laughs> I suppose it does. Now, you said that the three of you aren't uh, potential infectees of the spark. Well, technically, we can't catch it, but we could be carriers. Murphy. Thanks. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I see. I don't want to be responsible for breaking the quarantine. I suppose. To be, well, I think it's it, it's only um, 
a thing that matters uh, around people who who die, as that's when the transformation seems to, to occur. And not before. Notably not before. No. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of information upon how the spark spread. So, anything you have is helpful. I volunteer to further investigate these bodies and uh, draw whatever conclusions we can get from them. Since he's probably the, the, the safest and, and the smartest uh, candidate for the, for the, for the task. And definitely the most enthusiastic. V knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, since the three of you do appear to be uh, at the least resistant to the infection, I would ask you to continue investigating this and frankly if Salazar is responsible for having sent this infected here I would be concerned that there are more at his manor I would ask that the three of you investigate his manor as well as independent contractors or With the blessing of the guard? With the blessing of the guard. Darlings, I believe we have been deputized. Oh. <laughs> Temporarily. I make no promises if you mistreat my goodwill. After all, I could order you quarantined for an extended period, as is my purview. There we go. Now you're talking like a commander. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to fill the role now that Lutenia is no longer with us. Who would you like to have come talk to us about our uh, contractor fee? I think he lets out like a low hiss the, <laughs> in the like way that crocodiles do. Oh, I'm certain we'll, we'll simply send an invoice to, to where, where, where it needs to be. He says... I will pay you 60 silver as a group to investigate the manor. Keep in mind for scale, one silver is like a common laborer's daily wage. Alright. I've got four coin in hand, so that sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Also, out of character to be clear, that's not 60 each. That Understood. Is, yeah. I will take the, that, that fee, certainly. I am not a cruel man. She's if cool they're. Blooded. She does not say that. She does not say that. She does not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Spe speaking of, he too has one of those braziers, like, on his hip. With, like, a pouch of charcoal on the opposite. Um, and he says, If you encounter additional troubles, you may record them, and I will consider them for additional expenditures. That sounds perfectly reasonable, um, commander. Very well. I think that we shall hold... You said there is one more of your party here? Uh, yes. Well, uh, two more counting the rod, but upstairs. I shoot you a dirty look. 
<laughs> Never narc on the rat. <laughs> a rat? Why would I care about a, a rat? Listen, Commander, I don't I don't work for the guard. I don't know your priorities. I was just giving as much information as I had. <laughs> well, technically, we do work for the guard now. I suppose we do. Is there a... Beg your pardon, it's my first day. <laughs> I think he actually l does laugh at that. <laughs> and then he says, All right, well, your companion is flesh, as you put it earlier. Flesh-based, yes. We shall keep an eye on her for a while, just to be safe. If you have any grief counselors employed on the force, I would... What's a grief counselor? <laughs> if you have a nice person to talk to, please make them available for our friend. I will see if there is anyone in my guard who can think of such an individual. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an enormous amount of paperwork to deal with because of this incident and my new role. I wish you uh, before you leave, Commander, just to be clear, you have given us dispensation to, care, to bear arms within the city, correct? Mm, I suppose you will need a badge for that or some sort of mark. Do any of you have a scribe's kit? Hmm. Good I'm question. sure. I think <laughs> I think it's fair to say that there is somewhere in here where you can find paper and quill. It's it's yeah, it's an embassy. There's probably paper and quill here. <laughs> yeah. There's so a library just over here. Yes, we can get this. Yeah. Um, so, V, do you go to, into the library to get that? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just be right back. Um, okay, so the first thing you see upon entering the library is a small shrine to the lightning god. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Are there <laughs> candles in the shrine? <laughs> like, small relative, of course, right? It's like, it's, so it's still, like, 12 feet wide. <laughs> Hmm. Well, we simply will not be talking about that, and I'm just going to lock this library door behind me. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's definitely, like, a desk in here with uh, a couple books out and some paper and quill and ink for uh, easy... Easy note taking for anyone who's working in this library. So, I'll just take that um, and and come back with with all this in hand, and we can we can sort that out on the on the kitchen, not the kitchen, the, the dining room table. Um. Yes. So, um, Commander Hastings writes you a letter, basically saying that the bearer of this, and then writes your name. Is, does V have a fuller name, or is it just V? I, mean, I know you said Madam V, but is there, like, is that short for something? Madam V is a stage name, um, and we would not see her full name, I think. Like, it would be on there, but, like... Not said on camera. Right, known as Madam V. Yes. Um, Okay, yeah, so the camera will frame it so that you can see over his shoulders, but you can't see the full name, just the AKA, because mm -hmm. his head is blocking it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so he writes a letter for each of you uh, saying that you have, that you are permitted to bear weapons inside of the city limits and uh, seals it with the wax signature of the commander and vice commander. Mm. And then signs it and presents it to each of you. I think it also has a limit on it. It's good for one week. <laughs> it's like 
coupon. <laughs> <laughs> Just about. He doesn't. He doesn't want you to like go waving it around a year from now after you're lo- no longer working for the guard and be like, "This is totally legit." I swear. Limit four per customer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have a week to get this sorted out before you're no longer permitted to carry weapons, and thus presumably we'll need to go back to him and state your findings and get a new uh, dispensation. Mm. So, is there anything else you require of me before I leave? One, uh, what is your name, sir? The minor guard. Oh, the, just the, the rookie? Yeah, because I'm I've, I've starting the disposition table on him, and I'm going to work that angle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so he says, uh, I'm, I, I'm Private uh, Mikkel Jenkins. All right. Um, also, I need you both to head out to the washroom and sterilize yourself as best you can with some soap and water before going out again. How fully do we need to sterilize ourselves? <laughs> Is this a full body decontamination, or am I just washing my hands? I like that uh, this guy would have a concept of a full body decontamination. <laughs> <laughs> He's seen some things. <laughs> Uh, better safe than sorry, Commander. There is there is a, a bathroom there. I see. All right. There is a secondary washroom upstairs if you don't want to share. <laughs> you can go one at a time, Dorothy. <laughs> I don't know. Time is precious. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> okay. I'm Don't sure believe it. <laughs> I'm sure we can manage thank you Actually, yeah there's like two there's three no less than three baths upstairs that's fantastic this place is incredible <laughs> yeah I got I kind of got distracted a bit imagining what it would feel like to be in a giant's bathtub <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could just stretch for days it's, it's called a pool <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, the vice commander and uh, Jenkins, or I guess the commander and Jenkins, they go off to decontaminate themselves. What are y'all up to? Well, it would be nice to de-escalate the siege waiting outside. Um but I don't anticipate that happening without the the blessing of the commander in sight, so... Um. <laughs> so you're just gonna wait until he finishes? I mean... I don't <laughs> have any other... Yeah, I don't have any other plans here. I but. mean, yeah, it's fair. Well, okay. Viper's gonna retrieve weapons from the storeroom. Oh, good call. Yeah, fair. Yeah, so that, to be clear, that storage room over by the library is just like there's like some pantry, some dry goods in there, and also some writing supplies. It's it's nothing like exciting. There's probably a bag of coal along with a bag of dried manure. Um, the bag of coal is much smaller. All right. I'm going to request some help in dragging these bodies to storage. I think it would be significantly less traumatizing for uh, Ingirl to come down without the body of her mentor sprawled out. Certainly, certainly. Um, I, I can help with that. Thank you. Okay, so where are you putting these bodies? Into storage. The, the storage room by the kitchen? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> Here's hoping Ingril doesn't decide to, like, get a <laughs> snack <laughs> to feel better. That, uh, might be traumatizing. We can, we can grab it for her if she gets hungry. Yeah. I'll, uh... I'll... I don't know. Go pull a blanket or a curtain, uh... To cover them. Fair. There's at least one fewer occupied bedroom in this building. Oof. Brutal. Okay. So... The bodies are covered. The, I think the the commander and the private finish up, and they go and they clear things up with the guards outside. As he stated earlier, there's still a quarantine on this place. Uh, Ingril will not be permitted to leave for the next little while until they deem it uh, safe. But the three of you are free to come and go. Okay. So, what do y'all want to do? Hmm. Um, I suppose we ought to uh, go pay Salazar a, a visit. See if uh, he felt the same fate that we did. Or if if it if this was like a, a targeted attack. Okay. All right. I'm going to take you all over to the city map. I, I would like to grab my 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 lance and uh, my my gentleman moose. Uh, in the <laughs> where where ha what is your moose's name? Uh, my my moose's name is gentleman moose. It's Aww. gentleman moose. All right. <laughs> so. I think Gentleman Moose is probably... No, okay, here's a question for V and Viper. Is this particular breed of moose like the common riding animal for root walkers? Or is Gentleman Moose a special individual? I mean, already he he is special. Is Yeah, he? Yeah. Yeah. Already he is special because... He's a special character mechanically, but I mean, like, um, I'll say probably not where where Viper grew up, because she comes from a very uh, aquatically focused uh, place. So mm -hmm. her people ride whales, not moose. Cool. Yeah, I suppose where um, I, I I think where where Madame V is from, it is a little bit more common, but they are, um, really, di like difficult to, um, to maintain. I think, um, so, uh, gentleman Moose is very dear and no, he's uh, Moose. Fuck off. <laughs> um, <laughs> very precious, at least to um. <laughs> Um, and don't think like it's it would be like um like a, a particularly skittish breed of horse um you see someone like just riding that down the street that's that's kind of impressive so okay um so so they're kind of rare is is what i'm getting yeah i think gentleman moose is probably the largest living organism on the island <laughs> because uh, to be uh, like mechanically you Big. yeah you are a large creature mm -hmm. which means that you need to ride a huge creature mm -hmm. so i think like moose are already very big in real life this is a moose that is probably larger than an African elephant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I can very easily hold conversations with people on like the second story when I'm um, writing. Oh, absolutely. And like, you're not looking up very far to talk to someone on the third. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so w where has Gentleman Moose been during the performance and the dinner? Um, there's probably a, um, well, hmm. Would I have... I'd have, I'd have taken Gentleman Moose to the to the embassy. I feel like there's a space somewhere on the grounds for, for him to hang out. Like a... Yeah, there actually... There is actually, like, a... Uh, a storage area slash uh, service entrance on the basement level because there's like a ramp that goes down to it and there is enough room for him to fit in there so <laughs> he's probably like scrunched in there <laughs> but, I think he's pretty 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 well adjusted to either like hanging out in, in, in stables he's not built for or they're not they're not built for him or just like hanging out in the street or nearby and just chilling because that, there's not a lot of spaces that are built for, for gentlemen moose so yeah where does a 9,000 pound moose sit right <laughs> okay. wherever he very well wants yeah so <laughs> uh, Viper and Dorothy I guess you two are like waiting out front as gentleman moose like unfolds himself from, <laughs> from this like lower massive almost garage leg door and I think there's Clop. yeah Clop. Clop. <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely some like gasps from the guard <laughs> who are on quarantine duty I, I think the, the the ballista team starts like rapidly turning it to try and aim it over at them and then someone shouts at them Jesus. <laughs> and they, they like look shamefaced. They they never actually got it over to aim at him. But like the city is supposed to be quarantined. So anything out of the unusual has the like they're used to dealing with smugglers and pirates and cut purses. Their job is to protect the city and the island from the sparked. But no one here has ever had to deal with the sparked probably. <laughs> Especially not the one, especially not the Coast Guard uh, situated in the city. Uh, so yeah, you <laughs> he unfolds, and I guess V, you climb up on his back, or okay. I'm riding side saddle. That's only important to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to. Oh, right, okay. So, looking at the city map, I think that the delegation is in the, the north end of. Uh, the Merchant Quarter, which is number five on the map. And Salazar's uh, Manor is <coughs> basically at like the southern end, right up against the wall where there's this big open space. Are, <laughs> are the two of you also on the back of Gentleman Moose or are you walking alongside? Uh, well, I'll, I'll Viper will walk. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Viper, may I ride on your shoulders, please? Certainly. Thank you. And Fox Glove is with me. Okay. So the uh, five of you make quite the convoy as you move through the streets. Definitely, I think most people get out of the way of Gentleman Moose because it would be so easy to get stepped on. I'm sure he's very careful and precise because he is a skilled mount, but no one knows that. They just know there's this giant fucking creature walking through town. In fact, I think there's there, there are probably people who recognize him. Because, as I said, he's probably the largest living... 
uh, <laughs> mobile organism. I'm sure there might be trees on the island larger, but... Gentleman Moose probably doubles as a walking advertisement for the opera company. Oh, enjoy, enjoy very much. Do, does he have, like... <laughs> a banner? Yeah, like, on the side of him. <laughs> Or, or in his antlers, like a big billboard <laughs> spread between them? Or is he just addressed in a similar fashion to Madame V? So. That's cute. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's some, there's some quote-unquote finery um, <laughs> sort of draped over this moose. Um, I, I feel like if this were like modern day, uh, Gentleman Moose would have uh, his own like fan Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah abs absolutely he would of course he's probably he's he might have more fans than you do v it's possible Ca yeah catch me out here following gentleman moose ebooks <laughs> <laughs> okay um let me so to be clear, there is because this is fantasy craft, mm -hmm. the uh, outfit that he might be wearing does not provide a mechanical bonus, but it is possible to get such things for him. Fantastic! I've already decided a coat of armor for my rat. <laughs> there you go. He's gonna look great. <laughs> okay. So, the five of you uh, making your way through town uh, towards Salazar's home. You reach there in good time. It's probably getting on to be uh, the middle of the night at this point, since you were having your after-party dinner and drinks. Yeah, okay, um, mechanical <coughs> question. Mm -hmm. uh, we do recover one vitality per hour. So, how many hours? Uh, let's see, one for waiting for the vice commander to arrive. Mm -hmm. um, and I... Uh, we'll say another hour. So everyone can regain two vitality. Except for Dorothy. Um, actually, I think because I have special construct, I think my wound, uh, wounds heal normally. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't hit, so. All right. Some fancy porcelain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you reach Salazar's Manor, and... It is a big, walled estate. Uh, there is a gate out front with a small wooden guard post and an envelope box on the gate. Uh, there is no one in the guard box. The envelope box is stuffed full of mail. The gate is closed. I see some questions are already being answered. <clears throat> what do y'all want to do? How tall is the gate? Uh, <laughs> it's probably about 12 feet tall. So I could, I could uh, just sort of... Literally it. all of us can easily see over it. <laughs> yeah, oh, to be clear, the gate is like wrought iron. You can see through it. <laughs> okay. Um, and sorry, I should have been clear on that. So yeah, the, the wall around and the gate itself are all wrought iron. Um, they sort of, at the top, curve downward into points to hinder anyone trying to climb over them. Um, less of an issue for you three, since the height difference is such. And I think, frankly, Dorothy, you can probably just slip between the bars. Are there any lights on in the mansion? No. There's uh, no lights on from what you can see. Um, there's no smoke coming out of the chimney. 
Um, give me a search roll. Would love to. Control that is somewhere here. Just that is a seventeen. Seventeen, nice. Okay, some other things you notice. Um, it's not. It's clearly designed to be subtle, but you can tell that the windows are all barred, mm -hmm. so that it can't just be broken in. Um, you do spot that uh, on the front of the manor, there is a one of the windows is smashed. Mm. Um, and the front door actually has a chain around the handles, like a heavy chain around the handles. And there is some splintering on the door. There's like a, a may, maybe like about an inch or two wide gap uh, in the in the door itself. As in someone was trying to get out from the inside? Mm -hmm. Potentially. The grounds themselves are not exactly well kept. Like, it looks like once upon a time they were well maintained. There's lawns and some bushes and some trees that had shape to them in some point in the past but they're clearly just naturally growing at this point. Not in a, like, this place has been abandoned for years kind of way, but in a, uh, there is no longer a professional gardener maintaining the grounds. Um, what else might you pick up? Uh, I already mentioned the lack of smoke coming out of any chimneys in the building. Um, oh, here's a thing. This manor has a lot of chimneys, which is not like that unusual since there's such a high Saurian population in the town. But also Saurians are cold blooded and it's the middle of winter. So I think we shall take a break, unless you have any more questions you want to ask about what you see at this time. Um, are there animals on the grounds? Uh, you see, you can spot a stable, but there's no like creatures inside of it. Okay. That's it really. All right. So, we shall go to break and we will be back uh, in about five minutes. See you then.